At Waters and Stanton, we carry a wide range of ham radio products. So don't forget to check our website, Just Key In Ham Radio Store, and take a look at all our many products, great prices as well. Well, 20 metres sounds pretty dead at the moment, but is it? Welcome to another video from Waters and Stanton, our video channel and I'm glad you could join me. I've been tuning around the band and, uh, well, it, it's, it's early evening now, so probably not surprising that 20 metres is, is dead. But you don't know. You don't know whether it's actually dead or whether there's just not any activity on there. I want to show you today how you can check propagation and also do some very useful comparative tests on different antennas. It uses the reverse beacon network. Now, a lot of you will have probably heard of this and um, no doubt quite a few of you would have used it, but there is a downside to the reverse beacon network if you're not a CW operator because the reverse beacon network does need CW signals. And you may have perhaps disregarded it. You think, well, I'm, I'm not a CW operator, I'm a sideband operator, so you know, that's no good to me. Well, in actual fact, there is a method that you can use, which is very easy, particularly if you're an ICOM owner of one of the latest rigs like the IC7300 and the IC705. It's not much use for the IC9700 because as far as I know, there's no reverse beacon network active yet on uh, two meters and 70 cents may be wrong, but I don't think there is. But if you're an HF operator and you're wondering what conditions are like in your area from your position on the earth or with the antennas you've got, then it is very useful. And it's particularly useful if you think the bands are dead and you just wonder whether they are dead. I mean, you could spend ages on 10 meters calling CQ in the, perhaps in the hope you're going to have a contact. Um, but the band may be totally dead. Well, if you use the reverse beacon network, you can see pretty well whether there is any propagation on 10 metres and if it is worth carrying on putting out CQ calls. Same on the other bands, of course. So I'm going to today take a look at how you can, as an SSB operator, or CW operator, how you can make use of this very valuable network. And I'm using the IC7300 as an example. If you've got the IC705, then follow me through because the, the um, method is almost identical. So let's take a look. The reverse beacon network is a network of beacons around the world that are listening for CQ or test calls. And as soon as they receive one, they will decode that call. The problem is, of course, that they operate on CW, and that's put a lot of people off, because if you're a phone operator, then you think, well, I can't send CW, so what's the point? Well, in fact, you don't need to be able to send CW. And I'm going to demonstrate this by using the IC7300, but as I said before, it also applies to the IC705, and of course, if you've got another make of radio, you can probably use the same technique. So, let's have a go. We press the menu button and you'll see a menu item there showing Kia. We press that and that takes us into the memory settings. Press edit and we press edit again. And we've now got the eight memories up on the screen. I'm going to program menu one. So we press menu one and we press edit again. And that takes us into the type screen. Now we're going to type in the word test, T-E-S-T. -E now we're going to leave a space and type it again, T-E-S-T. -E now, next piece is important, we're going to type D-E, which in CW is from. So we 
type in DE, another space, and type in the call sign. In my case, it's G3. O J V. Leave a space and we'll type that call sign in again G3 O J V. That makes it easier for the reverse beacon to uh, pick the call sign up. Now we press in enter, we can see what we've typed in. Test, test, D, G3, O, J, V, G3, O, J, V. Now I'm going to duplicate that message so it's sent twice. And I can scroll through the original message with that arrow at the top right. And I'm now going to enter that message again. Unfortunately, there's no copy and paste as far as I can see. So you have to literally uh, re-enter it again. Right, there we are, done. Now, if I press enter, we can see the full message. Test, test, DG3OJV, G3OJV, test, test, DG3OJV, G3OJV. We now press return a couple of times, and that takes us out. Right, we're now ready to go. So we press menu, we go up to Kia, press Kia, and we're now ready to press M1 where we stored our message. And this will enable us to test the system out, send a message to reverse beacon, ready to see what the results are. And by the way, make sure that you've selected break in so that when you send the message, the transceiver goes into transmit. To do this, select CW mode and then on the left hand side, press the break in button and that will indicate on the main panel. Make sure you've selected a quiet frequency. We've selected 14023, and now you're ready to go. Don't forget, of course, to set the key and speed up. I set the key and speed to 18 words a minute. And also, of course, you must operate in the CW area of the band when you're sending out these test calls. So now you're back on receive, it's time to go into your search engine and type in reverse beacon. And now select spot search. And now type in the call sign, which in my case is G3OJV. And then press return. And now you can see the results on the screen of 14.023. I was spotted by six stations, some of which were in America, and you get the time, the date, and most importantly, the signal strength. Now we can have a bit of fun with this system because it enables us to do one or two things. The most interesting I found is to reduce power. So I'm gonna reduce the power to uh, 10 watts on the uh, a 20 meter band as you see, you see I've turned the power down. Now if you're going to do another test in quick succession it's important to change the frequency so I've gone from 14023 to 14024. There we are. And now we're going to send out our test call again. And this time, remember that we're running just 10 watts, so it's getting towards QRP, sort of power you might run with your IC705. And now you can see we were only spotted by four stations, but one in America, which is not bad for 10 watts, with band conditions as they are at the moment. 
And of course you can use the same procedure to check bands such as perhaps 18 megahertz or 21 megahertz to see whether they're open. So you can use this system on most bands. Uh, several things you need to um, bear in mind is that the reports won't come through immediately. You may have to wait a minute or two minutes before you see the reports come up on the screen. So if you send out um, a beacon test and then find there's nothing uh, showing up on the screen, don't worry, leave it for um, a couple of minutes and then uh, have, a, have another look and you'll be quite surprised. I think what you will be surprised at is how the bands very often are open to areas that you're not hearing. In other words, there's no activity. And that really, I suppose, underlines the fact that you should actually put out uh, CQs. So what I normally do is to check the band, put out a test call and see what happens. If there's nothing coming back, then really and truly it's a bit pointless putting out a CQ. Um, but I've often found that, well, in fact, today I, I checked uh, 15 meters, 21 megs, which is absolutely dead. But I did get a beacon back from Russia. So there was propagation, albeit only about sort of 6 dB, but there was propagation to Russia. So if I had the time, it would have been worth putting out a few CQ calls. 18 megahertz is another example where the band is very often open, but there's nothing there. So it's, it's a very useful uh, tool. The other um, useful feature is to do antenna comparisons. Now, if you've got two HF antennas, then it's very easy to do the test on one antenna and then repeat the test on another antenna. It's best to change frequency so you can immediately see which antenna uh, you're looking at when you look at look at the results and also to repeat those tests a few times because band conditions um, can be very variable and you might think there's a sort of a I don't know, six or ten dB difference between antennas and that may simply be due to QSB so don't assume that because you check one antenna and there's six or ten dB difference or whatever it is between that and the other antenna that that is actually true you need to repeat those tests several times before you come to a conclusion. The reverse beacon network is so available. I mean, you can, you can access it either on a Mac or PC, of course, and you can do it on an iPad or your mobile phone or whatever, provided you've got access to the internet. So it's quite a useful feature. And what I would suggest is that um, you perhaps take some photographs of the results or take some screenshots of the results for future reference, which uh, can be quite handy. So there we are. OK, well, that's one way of checking propagation and uh, checking antennas. And although I've done the demonstration on the IC7300, um, as I said, I think already that it will apply to the IC705 as well. And if you've got other makes of rigs, so you probably have got similar facilities. The good thing about the ICOM uh, transceivers, the, the current ones, is that you can actually type in the um, data, your, your, your test uh, and your call sign. Um, because if you're not a CW operator, you may not have a CW key, of course. So it is very easy to, um, to, to, to type it in. And... Uh, it's, well, I found it very useful. So I hope you find it useful as well. And maybe it'll give you a few contacts on some of the bands that you thought were dead to areas that you thought weren't, uh, there was no propagation to. As usual, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to press the subscribe button if you want to be informed of upcoming videos. And uh, don't forget, of course, that um, you, either, you can either go onto our website or pick up the telephone and we'll do some decent deals for you. And I appreciate you watching these videos and I hope that uh, some of them at least have been, <laughs> been helpful to you. As always, take care, keep safe and speak soon.